So alright guys, in today's video I'm going to be upgrading my 64GB Steam Deck to a brand new 256GB SSD. Now with that said, I'm not really revolutionizing or reinventing the wheel here, I'm going to be doing what basically every other teardown YouTuber has done when it came to upgrading the Steam Deck, although I'm going to be using Linux to flash over the recovery image. Now for those of you wondering if it's any difficult compared to using, let's say, Windows to do this step, well, it's actually not very difficult at all. In fact, Steam provides most of the commands that are needed to get this done. I do recommend the Steam page to be updated to include a command prior explaining to people how to use LSBLK if they'd ever used it. That is something we're going to need to get familiar with, but it's not that difficult. So as you can see on screen, I'm going to flash over the Steam recovery image to my USB drive. The very first step we need to do is download the image and after that open up a terminal where the image is located. In my case it was my downloads directory. Now from here you just got to type in LSBLK with the flash drive plugged in your computer but not mounted and look for the smallest drive. I forget what drive letter mine was but I'll have it up on screen. But yeah, once I found my drive letter, all I had to do was take note of it, go back to the Steam recovery page, and pretty much copy and paste that command into my terminal. And from there, all I had to do was change the SDX portion of the command valve provided to my specific drive's letter. One thing to note, I wish Steam would automatically update this page whenever they have a new Steam Deck recovery image. The recovery image name may vary compared to that on the command itself. In my case, as you saw in this video, as I hit enter it did not work. For a minute I thought I had the drive name wrong, but no, it's just the recovery image file goes by a different name now. Although by the time this video is up, that problem's probably already been fixed. But all I had to do is delete the last portion of the command and make sure I had the right image specified. After I did that, I hit enter and I pretty much just had to sit back, relax, and wait. By the way, this step will take a long time whether you're doing it on Linux or Windows. This recovery image file is just highly compressed and it takes a fair bit of time to extract it and put it all on the USB drive. And speaking of the USB drive, I believe I used a 16 gigabyte. USB, I'll have it on screen if I'm wrong, but I used a 16 gigabyte USB drive and there is one thing to note. Since it's like we're burning a DVD, but instead setting up a USB drive, this will completely format and erase our USB drive, so make sure to back up any files on it before you run the previous commands. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to fast forward this part of the video now to when it's finished. And when it's finished, you should get a prompt and you should also see the terminal command finish out. After it's finished, all you have to do is pull out the USB drive and we're pretty much done software wise when it comes to setting up the recovery image for our Steam Deck. Now when it comes to the Steam Deck itself, to actually get this SSD in here, we're going to have to take it apart. So alright, to take the Steam Deck apart now, we're going to need some tools, and I recommend using some tweezers. Alright, jokes aside, if you got that reference, you're pretty cool. But seriously, tweezers will help. We also want some plastic spudgers. They can come from any kind of fix-it kit, or if you don't have one available, you can use a credit card or some other thin plasticky material. I sometimes use these plastic hanging hooks from uh, old plastic boxes. They work pretty good in the long run. I didn't need to use them here, however, because I had a pick lying around. Another thing we're going to need is the correct uh, screwdriver tip. I am using a Phillips Zero bit. It's on screen right now. You want to make sure you're using the right bit. If you're using the wrong sized bit, or your bit's just worn out, you could potentially strip the screws in your Steam Deck. And since these screws are recessed, unlike on the Switch, you can't really fix that very easily, so try not to strip your screws. Make sure you're using the right bit, and everything should go smoothly after you get the back off. But yeah, to get the back off, all you gotta do is take the SD card out of your Steam Deck. Then you gotta take the four screws out of the back of the Steam Deck. But before we actually proceed any farther, let's actually put our Steam Deck into storage mode, or battery storage mode. This step isn't really necessary, but it's what's recommended on the iFixit guide, so I'm going to include it anyway. Basically, what we need to do is turn off our Steam Deck, and while we turn it on, hold volume up. This should load us into the BIOS. From here, 
you got to navigate the BIOS until you find the storage battery mode or battery storage mode and pretty much enable it. After we enable it and save and close out of the BIOS, the Steam Deck should be safe enough to progress with the rest of these steps. Anyway, now that our Steam Deck doesn't have the screws in the back, no SD card in, what's left to do now is just use a plastic spludger, turn the Steam Deck over, I started on the right side under the, uh, under the trigger, and I pretty much begin prying up and all around the device itself. Once you get one of the sides pretty much loosened and free, it should be easy to start prying it from the other side. But it should be noted the Steam Deck is held together with these plastic clips, so try to take some care, don't be too forceful, because if you break these clips, your Steam Deck won't go back together the same way, and you will feel it. Thankfully, however, since I've done enough of this before in the past with various other devices, this wasn't really a hard process for me, and none of my clips really broke. In fact, it came apart pretty much first try with no damage at all. But once you got the back off, just lift it, put it out of the way, make sure you don't lose it. And from here, you should see a black shielding on top of the Steam Deck itself. We want to remove this. There are three screws that hold it in place. Once those screws are out, all you gotta do is pry on this shielding. It may feel a little resistive, that's because there's thermal pads under it. Just pry on it gently and it should come off cleanly, if not, Make sure to put the thermal pads back where they came off from. However, there is one thing to note. My Steam Deck is the newer revision, which is why it has this black heat spreader. Yours might be the silver edition one, in which case you have a fourth screw to remove, I believe. Which will be located under a sticker on it. But yeah, with that said, this heat spreader came off pretty good in my case. It's an EFI shield. I'm not, I'm not too sure what shielding it is, but it came off good either way regardless on my unit. So what I did was, since the thermal pads came off cleanly with it, I put it off to the side in such a way that no dust or dirt can get on those pads. Now at this point in time, the iFixit guide says to disconnect the battery. I recommend not doing it if you're careful and steady enough, you shouldn't need to. However, if you feel more comfortable having the battery disconnected, at this point in time, disconnect the battery. But if you're not planning to disconnect the battery like I did, then be dang sure not to drop any screws when you start unscrewing the SSD to put a new one in. But yeah, pretty much at this point, once that shielding is off, right under it is the connector for the battery and the SSD itself. If you ever replaced an SSD in your computer, it's pretty much the same process, just with a smaller SSD. If you want to know the SSD type that I'm using, I'll have a screenshot on screen of the particular one I'm using and where I got it. Like I said, it was pretty cheap, $10 with like $2 shipping, something like that, and it's a 256GB variant. I made sure to test the previous SSD before installing this new one, just because I wanted to see what kind of voltage differences there may be between the two. I also wanted to just make sure that my SSD was fine both before and after I set this thing up. I recommend if you have the know-how and the skills and the time to do it, test your SSD before and after. I'll have a command on screen if you wish to do so. But yeah, like I said, at this point I decided to leave my battery connected and I basically went straight for the SSD. All I had to do is unscrew the little screw. The SSD should pop up. Then from here we just pull it on out. After that, you can take off the electrostatic uh, shielding. I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, the ESD shielding. You can either peel this off or slide it off. If you're lucky, you could just slide it off. In my case, it just slides right off. I believe they do this differently now compared to the older model Steam Decks. But if yours is the older model Steam Deck, you may have to unpeel it and repeel it onto a new SSD to get it on. With mine, like I said, all I had to do was slide it off. And when I came to putting it back on the new SSD, it was just basically the reverse steps. I just slid it on the new SSD. Then I plugged it back into the M.2 slot and retightened the screw down. And that's basically it. After that, the SSD is installed. Now from here, I recommend actually reassembling, putting the, the heat shield or the ESD shield, I don't remember what it's called, back on the little black or silver shield. Put that back on, make sure your battery is plugged in. Now I don't really recommend clicking the back shell back on. We don't really need the back shell on to test things. So from here, what you need to do is if you put it in battery storage mode, just plug your Steam Deck into the wall for a second, then unplug it, 
and the BIOS should pop up complaining about not able to find a boot image. From here, we can just plug in our USB-C to USB adapter, or if you're lucky enough and have a USB with a USB-C adapter built into it, just plug in your recovery media to the Steam Deck. Now from this part, it might look scary, but it is booting up a Arch Linux installation medium for the Steam Deck, so you'll be seeing a bunch of OK prompts and text scrolling across the screen. It might even look like it's not doing anything at times, but that's because it's a highly compressed image. You just gotta give it some time. Let it do its thing, and when it's done, it should boot up right into KDE Plasma with some recovery menu options. Now from here, one thing to note, there is no touchpad driver, or I believe thumbstick driver at all, so you'll have to use the touchscreen to navigate these menus. Now if you're setting up a new SSD like I am on the desktop, the second icon I believe should say re-image your Steam Deck. That is the icon we want to click. Just a simple tap should start re-imaging our Steam Deck with a new Steam Deck OS image. You may need to hit OK afterwards just to verify that you want to proceed with installing or re-imaging the SSD. Now at this point in time a console should pop up. Don't worry, it's just doing its thing. It will re-image the Steam Deck SSD. If you're worried that it might not get all the partitions and things that are required to function, like I said, you could test the SSD before you upgrade, can compare it to the after upgrade and make sure all the partitions and everything are there that are needed to be created. But Valve seems to have done their homework here and has made this process very easy. So you shouldn't need to uh, mess with anything else. It should automatically find the SSD within your Steam Deck and format just that. So pretty much just sit back, relax, let the re-imaging tool do its thing. And that should be that. Now after it's done re-imaging the SSD, I believe it should reboot from what I remember, but I don't have any B-roll clips for this, so I can't really say for sure. But I just made sure everything worked correctly, and when I noticed it did, all I did was turn the Steam Deck back off, put the back back on, put the four screws on, and that was pretty much it. From there, I had to do a Steam Deck OS update, sign into my Wi-Fi, and basically sign into my Steam account again. But besides that, after I did the upgrade, everything worked out great. I'll have some SSD stats on screen if you guys are wondering how well it performs compared to the stock SSD. Overall, I believe it's less power hungry, it has more space, there aren't that many read cycles on it for being a used drive, and the drive health was overall very good. So yeah guys, that's basically it. That's how you upgrade the Steam Deck SSD. Overall, it's not a very difficult process at all. And like I said, there's only really one thing to look out for. Make sure you're using the proper tool bits, and make sure you don't short anything out. But yeah, the process really was as simple as that, and I'm going to leave today's video off here. If you run into any issues, make sure to comment down below, and I'll try to help you out to the best of my ability, as always. And as always, I will have a link in the description linking you to the iFixit webpage, as well as to the Steam Deck recovery page. But with that said, I'm going to leave today's video off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. As you saw, just hit cancel on that, and the installation here should just about be done. I'm going to try to zoom in on this. As you can see, it is now saving the blocks. And